introduction. So welcome everybody. Uh, hello, um, welcome to the first Etc. event of 2023. Uh, so for anyone that doesn't know, Etc. is the name of our program of artist talks that we provide free for everybody here and on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's funded by our supporters on Patreon. And today I'm going to be speaking to the artist Jeanette Barnes about her work. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about her first book and about the course that she'll be running for us down in Brighton, or very briefly at least, and there'll be an opportunity for questions at the end as well. Um, so I've long been an admirer of Jeanette's large-scale city drawings, particularly, which I came across at many national exhibitions, I think, before I ever met you in person, Jeanette. Um, so I'm very excited to be here today. I also went to one of your uh, one of your online sessions during lockdown as well, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, but it's really nice to actually be able to have you for a whole hour to um, to ask you a little bit more about your work. So thank you for joining us. And hello, hello everybody. And thank you so much, Jake, and people of Draw Brighton for actually asking me to come along. Would um, Let's just dive straight in because an hour goes quickly. And I know you prepared does. everything for us. <laughs> yeah, I'll, um, I'll get my share screen. <laughs> We've been practicing. We've been, we've been good people. We've been practicing. But let's, let's have a look. Well, and, and we are both seasoned experts with this online malarkey now, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, uh, we was talking a little bit before, and uh, when everything stopped in, in in lockdown, we I didn't think I'd be able to to go online to teach or enjoy it, and I found that that I actually could do both. Uh, as we we're saying, I can't stand Microsoft Teams, but Zoom is, is actually. It's, it's quite a good thing and it is really good to actually reach out to so many people in different places. Um, um, so sometimes I, I work for the Royal Drawing School and I also do my own kind of like teaching online with, with my husband Paul. But um, to, to be able to like teach people in China and kind of like Arkansas and di different kind of places and we have had Paul was actually teaching a school in Peru when it, when it was locked out. So it's, it's just really exciting. It feels like a kind of magic to be teleported all around the world and to be actually able to interact in real time with everyone. Yeah, I, I mean, and also it was, I had to rethink a lot about the type of teaching I, I was doing because obviously kind of like you're using more photographs, you're using more secondary information. So it, it was even that actually trying to, we, 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 we had a great session where we, where, where, where we had, um, where we went to our studio and had uh, a couple of our life life models where we took kind of films that was such a fun day and actually to use those images to actually get people to do kind of, kind of life drawings for them was, was really interesting I never thought that that would be something I would be doing. Would it definitely surprised me with life drawing online as well that it took off in the way that it did and that it worked as well as it did but it is yeah that, I mean I, I was actually in Paul actually, and we still do it. We, we were like a life drawing tutor for thirty years. We 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 go. We used to go around the schools with the Royal Academy of Art Outreach. And now we do it ourselves. Uh, I think we call drawing on life now, and we take a model into into schools. And it, so it's always been fascinating. I mean, I, I used to be obsessed with life drawing when I was at Liverpool. So yeah, I, I was I was in the life drawing room twenty four seven really. So it was always interesting. I, I don't want to take us off topic too much, but are you doing much at the moment? Do you do much life drawing right now? I don't personally do any hardly. I, I do a lot of kind of like examples when, when I'm in schools and things like that. But we, we were looking for examples to put on our website, we explore drawing. And uh, I couldn't find any. Where have 30 years of life drawings gone? I don't know. I think I'd, I'd leave them on the train or I'd lose them at the schools. I've only got any. I need to do it, actually. Maybe you've embraced that mantra that it's all about the process, not about the outcome, and every, all, all of the actual drawings have evaporated away. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I used to be obsessed by by my kind of life drawing, but it, it came it's come down a little bit now to to kind of like showing examples. But when I was at Liverpool, um, I, I went to Liverpool Polytechnic. I went. I come from a very very small town called uh, Great Harwood, and then. Um, my foundation was in Accrington and my tutor, I'm still in contact with him. Um, we, we used to do life drawing there. And then when I went to Liverpool, I, I was in Mike Knowles' life room and he was taught by Kossoff and Albert. 
and Michael Andrews. So it was kind of like searching for everything, you know, and it was, it was there was a little, somebody had wrote on our kind of like door in, in the life room. There was two life rooms, it was a colorful life room and there was ours and somebody had wrote in it, the room of size. Cause we're like, <gasps> you know, so <laughs> I love it. So do you think that informed your early drawings? Cause are, are we looking at some of your early drawings right now? Yeah, I mean, well this, this the one on the left, the, the, the pencil drawing was, uh, I, I did that when I was about 17 or 18. This is, uh, this is a little town near where I, this is Haslington. And um, I, as I say, I come from a small town and, beautiful countryside it's near the Pennines but I was never that interested in it and if I drew the countryside it had to have houses in and these are all the kind of we, we call them mills and hills town my, my, my little town used to have at one point it had 13 cotton mills and um, my parents um my my mum was a weaver and a lot of my kind of family was was weavers and then she became a machinist and uh and my dad worked in um uh, a paper mill and the only reason that I draw is because my dad used to bring paper home so I used to love going into these spaces so I was much more interested in the architecture of kind of like the mills and these massive big factories than than I was in this beautiful countryside so, um, the, sorry no 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 go on now I was just saying, and the, the one is on the right is his very cough of, very cough of base. That that's that's the first drawing I I, I ever did in London, and this is uh, this is Swiss cottage tube. And I was looking at uh, Kossoff's Bethnal Green Christmas party. <laughs> I think I think it kind of like came up to me. But um, one of the things I wanted to say was I don't know if anybody um, gets a little bit kind of like worried about you know maybe people have told them that they can't draw they can't think like that. I wasn't even allowed to do art at school they said I was so rubbish that I wasn't allowed to do it until I went to uh, my sixth form college Aquinton and Rosendale sixth form college and I said if you don't let me do art I will stay in this A-level English class and like that I was transported <laughs> to art <laughs> and um, you know I, I Previous to that, all I did was my dad bought me a Disney book and I just used to draw all the Disney characters in it. So just drawing and drawing and drawing. But this this love of buildings, of kind of big structures, that's something that's been a thread through your drawing history. Yeah, it, it certainly has. I'm trying to look for the... For the yeah. Um, Sometimes, I mean, these are two large drawings that, that I... Did one of, the one on the right is the interior of uh, King's Cross Station, and the one on the left is uh, the bank area. And I absolutely love these. These are something in in, in our book. The, the the one on the left, the the bank. It's called. It's under. Um, what, what, what's know your enemy. That's it. Know your enemy. Sorry, I'm just shouting to my husband over there. Yeah, it's called know your enemy because I do it all the time. I, I actually go there and draw all the time there because. It's one of the only areas that has about six or seven different generations of uh, architecture. I mean, in, in the middle, I mean, now this, uh, the cheese grater, which is the big kind of like building under construction in the middle, that's obviously been finished. But th there's kind of like um, the cheese grater, they've got the gherkin, there's actually two gherkins because I move a lot when I do sketching. Um, and then you've got the 1970s kind of NatWest Tower, You've got the Lloyd's building right right at the back and the uh, one Cornhill. And then you've got that lovely kind of like uh, triangle, that, that triangle of pediment. And that's the um, Royal Exchange pretending to be a Greek temple. Yeah. You, you know, so it's, um, it's, there's so much there that kind of like a city being kind of like continually rebuilt and added to. That's one of the things that I love. They've got all the cranes moving and it's, and then, you know, in, in the station, what I really like about it is, and I think it's from going into these, I've been thinking a lot recently, going into these massive big kind of like factories and the kind of idea between public spaces and kind of private spaces, but it's how small the people are and how the people work within the kind of like massive big spaces. 
that's one thing I've always loved about your drawing is that there's a, a sense of human interaction, but you know, that real sense of scale where you can mm. see these tiny little figures, but also you've, you've, you've got this sense of time encapsulated within the drawing, but both in the kind of moving cranes, but then that sense of movement in all of the little figures that, are they are they literal figures that you've observed? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, you know, they've all been. I've all sat there and drawn these these kind of figures. Maybe I might take some from from somewhere else. But in general, you know, I have lots of little sketchbooks, and not nobody else could actually see that they were from certain places. But I I, I do like, if possible, to actually keep them in. But all my drawings, they're, they're, it's a little bit. It's a little bit like. A, an animation it's a little bit like time lapse because mm -hmm. it's not about one moment in time there's kind of like many moments in time and I'll, I'll just show you the next one because I suppose I think that gives you uh <laughs> this is me in my studio and it's really unfortunate the the, the one in the top left it's a bit this was taken by quite a well-known kind of photographer and I realized afterwards there's a hole in my trousers <laughs> at the back and I didn't, I didn't realise at the time. But if we go to the one on the right, these are all the sketches that I make on location. So I, I just, I take a board. I don't really work in a sketchbook anymore because I, I really like taking out the pages. I like being able to put them on the floor. And um, I, um, so sometimes, sometimes it's so boring. They're like lots of like, kind of like structural things together. Sometimes, you know, they, maybe the ink ones are a little bit more, kind of kind of invented but it's just an amount of information and then I um the the drawing at the bottom which is in the um what's it called it's in the uh the Trinity Boy Wolf drawing uh prizes at the minute this is a little plan and I met everybody so if anybody is coming on any of my uh courses at any time you will make compositions and I love the idea of actually pulling all the information together and then we start um I start doing my large drawings you know mm -hmm. so so do you to what degree do you plan out those large drawings I mean you've got the kind of raw material of the the drawings made on location is this do you take supporting photographs as well I take masses of photographs but I only use I, I only use photographs when I'm not in the studio really or right if I have to kind of like put them together, I might look at the photographs to see how I can put the sketches together or <laughs> which is in normal. If I go to, because I one of the things I really like doing is going, and we'll talk about my trips going away, but the, you know, the, there'll be something that I'll have left out a little bit in New York or something like that. Where's that top corner? And I'll have to look at the photograph. But um, it's mainly, I mainly make a lot of these little compositions and, you know, place things around and, and change things. And uh, <laughs> I'm what a wicked person I am. Sometimes I, um, I teach little ones. I teach primary sometimes as well, you know. And uh, I say to the, <laughs> to, to the students, I used to have really long fingers. And, but I do a, such an amount of rubbing out that they kind of like, uh, that my fingers now are really short and they look at me and they go, oh, stop being so pathetic, you know. <laughs> but um, it's because I, as soon as you put more than two bits of information on a piece of paper for me, the third bit of information, you have to change it. You, you know, because it's kind of adding things. So I will make a lot of my ideas on paper and then take on my main paper and take take them out. Mm -hmm. I make lots of kind of. I'll have my felt. I'll have my uh, um, sketches. I'll have my compositions. But it's kind of like playing around on that piece of that large piece of paper. And I mean that it's nice that you've sort of brought in an element of play because it does feel like it must be so energetic. I mean, you. How do you maintain energy on that scale? For long I enough have to make a drawing of biscuits that and cups of tea, basically. Right. And, <laughs> At the back over here, as, as you walk back, there's this tiny little sofa, and uh, I put about three marks down and go, I've got to sit down and have a cup of tea. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, it's I, I don't realise how big certain things are until until you stop how much you're kind of like aching or something like that, and then I'll go and sit down. But they take me months. They take me a long time. But it's like putting an image down, and then I'll come back the other day and go, oh, God, that's terrible, and I'll take things away. And it... it it is quite energetic, and to be honest, I've done my neck and <laughs> my, my shoulders, and I have to. We talked about having lots of baths before, and uh, that I do actually go go for like a soak so that I can uh, I can do it. But um, 
and we, we, we also talked, uh, you, you know, before Jake, when, when we were just uh, chatting, that uh, sometimes students think that these are like, when I show them to people in a, in a classroom, that they're about A5 or, or A6 or something like that. They didn't realise, so that's why I show myself in there. But mm -hmm. what I'm also kind of like interested in it is uh, the history of cities. So this, these two are 20 odd years apart of the same place. So this is in the Docklands, and I did so much drawing in the Docklands, but there's about 20 years between it. And you can just see right at the back of the one on the left that the, uh, just try and show it, that's the dome and it's just been oh, made. Yeah. And um, this is a massive big kind of like um, home that's now being developed. But on the right of that, on, on that same photograph, this is now the new Crossrail station, 20 years on. So it's it's so interesting. And that's what I like. I like going year after year after year. And in the Docklands, I must have got so much kind of, kind of work doing. I was having a, an exhibition. I was an artist in residence somewhere. And I was having an exhibition in Clifford Chance. And I turned to the guy and said, I drew this being made. And I kind of forgot that I actually drew that building that's been there for 20 years or something. I said, I actually drew this as it was being made. So that's kind of like a fascinating thing for me, you know. And that you must develop an interesting relationship with the buildings, having spent so much time representing them. Oh, in I love them. Place. I love them. I mean, there's some, there's some people say, but that building's horrible, but I'd have drawn it from day two and it becomes my friend or, yeah. or, or my enemy, depending, you know. So um, let's just see what the next one is. So this is, uh, this is in Shoreditch High Street. And uh, I just walked past this a lot. And I, I think I have to go back. I was just taking some photographs the other, the, the other day of it. And I kind of have to go back. So sometimes, I mean, this is when the, the bridge was just put in at that point. So, you, you know, it was before the overground, the trains were going, they just put that in. So Shoreditch Station was just going to be made. So again, it is that, it's that kind of history idea of the kind of like uh, city kind of like moving and now that's finished so I need to go back and kind of like draw that so, so you do get an affinity to it but my favorite thing in, in this one is uh, is that kind of cycle bus on the right it looks like it's a cyclops it looks mad but <laughs> you know so I, I, I was upstairs in, in the T building I was trying to think I was drawing a a boss kind of like turning round mm -hmm. and um, sometimes it, it's trying to capture that but on the left I, I, I can, can't work out my right and left so on the left there's there's not just cars on the bottom one's a taxi so it's quite a particular thing uh, and sometimes it's actually that boss going underneath the the bridge it's white there but it's actually it would be quite dark Mm -hmm. So you're playing around with elements to see how they're going to fit in. And I have had lots of kind of like sketches of it, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller. And I often, I'm looking down at it, but I'll have done some drawings right next to that on the, on the street as well. And then far away and quite near to it. And um, well, one of the things that I'm really kind of interested in, I think, is space. And if you, if, where does that big main crane you can just see uh, that there's a there's the gherkin in the back and I like the idea of seeing things in the distance that we know is actually massive but when you see it from a certain part it will be quite tiny so are you, are you playing around with that sense of depth I mean sort of distorting literal perspective well it's, it's just that I, I actually yeah in, in some ways because I actually move so much I don't just do it from one uh, perspective point. Mm -hmm. I will go across the road. I'll sit down. I'll stand up. I'll go around. I'll I'll bring. When I was in, um, I'll show you afterwards. When I was in Shanghai, I was actually, you, you know, if you stand on one side of the road, you'd see this. But if you went to the other side of the road, you'd see that. So I feel that because they're on separate pieces of paper, I can put them together. Because when you're drawing, you'll just fill that small piece of paper. So actually, you can make it any scale you want. But this is the correct, around about the correct scale. But you can actually, because all we do is put as much information on that piece of paper 
as we can see. Mm -hmm. you, you know, sometimes, you know, we might go for the idea that we're looking at space and we're looking at that, but that's the kind of my kind of like almost like maths problem or my kind of problem when I go back to the uh, studio, what do I want to make bigger? What do I want to throw back? What do I want to play around with? But it's generally what the kind of like, um, what the situation is in front of you. But it's, it's also, sometimes I'll make the uh, people bigger or I'll make them smaller to make it feel like, like in the, uh, in the King's Cross, maybe I made the people too small because I wanted to feel it like a cathedral. Mm -hmm. So that's that that's the kind of thing that you can uh, that you can do. So this is uh, one of my favourite places. This is Tokyo. This this is Shibuya Crossing, and uh, one of the things I love doing is you taking a little a, a board or a small. Sometimes it's a lot smaller than that, but taking a board and going on a drawing jaunt. I just love going for seven or eight days and just immersing myself. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite places is New York, but this Shibuya, I've always wanted to draw Shibuya Cross. And I don't know if you know it, it's the one where there's like six or seven kind of like crossings in front of this station. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd always imagined, and, and I did quite, quite a lot of drawings, but it never came out. You, you can see down on it. You know that you can see down it, but what I realised is I wanted to be in there. It was so noisy. So the little, so the drawing on the on the right, it's a little bit dark. Uh, the, the picture on the right is one of my sketches being in that crowd. And uh, people ask me, "How do you draw when there's so many people around?" Never bothers me. You just focus and I have a go at it. And you're nice to people, but just carry on you, you, you know don't don't be rude to people but just carry on but in in china it was really funny there was like standing right in front of me i was like i can't do anything if, you, if you're doing that but in this one it was when i was stood there it was the, the noise and i just wanted to bring that kind of like noise and energy to the big picture you know the the kind of like advertisements were flashing on and it was almost like a sea of people and there was this cars at the back. And um, I, I just stood there the first day, right in the middle of it, and just put my hands up and go, this is it. Can it be, can it get any better than actually standing with all that noise? <laughs> and and do you carry that with you back into the studio, that sense of the moment, the you know, the oh, intensity of it? Yeah, I, I I think so in lots of ways. I mean, I I, I had a friend and uh, I said, oh, I'm going to uh, New York. I'm going to draw Times Square. And she said, yeah, but you want to use black and white? I said, what are you on about? She said, but it's so colourful. It's Times Square. I, what are you on about? You, you know, I, I don't think of my things as an absence of colour or, or something like that. I just think of getting that energy down. But, you, you know, she was she was thinking, you, you know, that you needed colour and... And I, you know, when I go back, I can feel that kind of excitement that that, that I had, you know, and, and the marks, because I have to draw really quickly. And they're not great. My sketches are never great. I never show my sketches ever hardly because they never finish. I mean, there wouldn't be a point of me drawing a perfect sketch outside and then coming back and copying it in exactly the same way. So they, they're all, I mean, they're pretty crappy to be honest, but they've got a lot of information for me. And, and that's an interesting phrase. I think the information side, I mean, it, is it about um, almost kind of preserving the experience in marks or are you trying to kind of record shapes, you know, sort of pin people down that you've seen? Is, is it a bit it's, of It's that? a bit of both. I mean, there's so much information. I mean, sometimes it's so incredibly dull. Uh, that I that I have to kind of like uh, put uh, quite a few technical things together, and sometimes it's very particular. I mean, uh, I don't know if you can see right at the top. There's uh, it was so funny in Tokyo. There was these adverts. So right on the left on, on the top, there's these uh, adverts, and I think it was for H and M, and it was for these willowy blonde models, and they're selling all the kind of like they're, they're selling the goods. These beautiful but small dark-haired women 
you, you know, so I had to do, I had to do quite a lot of kind of like uh, very detailed sketches of that, and it because it just blew me away that that there was actually doing that. And underneath that, you can't really see here, but there's a boy band. They're all different heads. So sometimes it's quite particular, but sometimes it will be like this one over on the, the, the sketch on the other side, which is really just about trying to sometimes getting marks mm -hmm. down and just finding the kind of like cars going past. So I love drawing traffic. I cannot understand in this era, nobody ever draws cars and or traffic or buses and what is there in the 20th and the 21st century that has been most about? It's kind of like traffic and moving and going on holiday and doing things. But what traffic also does is it kind of like, it's not just about the movement. It's how it hides things. You, you know, you're, you're looking at a building, but sometimes you can't see it all because something will have been passed. Mm -hmm. And we see uh, kind of like when we go in cities, often we sat down in a car or a bus so you can see it differently and then we'll go the same journey standing up and it's got all these different things but there's only me you've just got that. <laughs> well i expect you to be doing cars soon jake okay that, with that, 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 that i challenge you I'm, I challenge I'm inspired it. to seeing your buses particularly just thinking that well, they, 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 they are insane they are they, they are insane but these are um at the bottom, there's some sketches, but at the top, this is uh, um, Shanghai. And uh, I fell in love with Shanghai. And then there's Dubai on the right as well. And underneath that, it's not a sketch, actually. It's kind of a finished drawing. It's a Ningyang Road, actually, uh, which, which is in Shanghai as well. And the others are, are kind of sketches on it. But it was, uh, when, I, when I went to kind of Shanghai, I wasn't, I, I'd never been before. And I thought, what am I going to draw? And, I decided, because I, I also went across to Pudong as well, which is just across the water. And uh, they've got fantastic European buildings, massive. And I, I just made a decision that I didn't want to draw the European buildings. I wanted to draw what the Chinese had actually either commissioned or they'd actually built themselves. So I went, and I know it's kind of a touristy trap, and I know it's been done up, but this is the old Shanghai. So I, I just wanted to, to to see this, and I just sat down and I and, and I just started the sketches. And the sketch in the middle is um, is uh, oh, oh sorry, I've, I've gone the wrong way. I've I've gone home. And the sketches in in the middle is uh, just me sat sitting down there drawing. It was one of the first or second days, and just trying to get your head into all these different a different culture a different way of looking at it it was it was uh, it was great actually but it was, it was quite a strange kind of thing and you know people just come up and laugh at me I'm the only white-haired person in the entire thing of Shanghai on my own stood there with a drawing board and they thought it was hilarious because it doesn't matter if you if you're like nine months or 90 you will have black hair in Shanghai, <laughs> you know, unless you're a tourist. And they just thought I was I was the biggest sideshow in Shanghai. I had people all around and it, it but it was it was so nice. And as long as you can say a few kind of like words, and then I get people coming up to me and kind of practicing their, their English students and things like that. But and I stupidly went. Well, people said, it's a mistake, it's a mistake. I went on the 1st of May, which is the biggest Chinese holiday. And they said, you'll just get overwhelmed. And it was, but what was nice was it was a lot of Chinese people themselves had come home. They, they'd come in, so there wasn't as many tourists in a way. It was, a lot of it was kind of like um, people from Shanghai, which, which I actually loved. And have you been back since then? No, this was just before lockdown. I, I, I was dying to go somewhere, but it's it's well, it's slightly different now going to China. But I I want to go to uh, I'd love to go to Hong Kong, but I'm thinking about it whether I can actually do that. I I, I need to draw Happy Valley Race Course with all the uh, <laughs> with all the uh, kind of like um, skyscrapers around it, and. Um, the, the one on the right is Dubai, and that's changed so much now. Mm -hmm. 
and it's a very very strange place in Dubai but I I really enjoyed it I, I this was looking down from my hotel and just in the distance there's one and this the largest in town when uh the Burj was being made so that was quite a while ago now and uh, it just fascinates me how somebody has took this kind of like desert place where they used to they used to be known mainly for like pearl diving and in a very short amount of time made this city i'm sure if i went back i would hardly recognize anything and uh, they have this like archery this kind of like road going through so the the uh, cars are tiny and you can't really see it but this strange little thing down here that it that looks like a big woodlouse that's the metro stations being built mm -hmm. so it was like you, you know onto the next bit so that next connection was kind of like really kind of interesting and uh let's come to the next bit. this is where my heart lies oh no not this one this is where my heart beats new york mm -hmm. this is this is one of my favorite places in the entire world. This is Grand Central Station. And um, as soon as I get, I've, I've only been about, I don't know, four or five times, five times or something like that. But as soon as I get off the plane and into me little yellow taxi, and to be honest, you, ha you have to just put your money into going in a yellow taxi and being driven into New York. I have to do this and I fling my bag into like, my small, <laughs> my tiny little place and just go and sit there and have a cocktail. And you know, in my book, see for cocktails, you know, so. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a fan of a cosmopolitan, am I right? I'm a Cosmo girl, I really am. And uh, I, I've done, over the years, I've done so many um, drawings of uh, Grand Central Station and it's just one of the most iconic places and in the 1950s and i love looking at the photos 1930s i should say 1930s 1940s uh, at the top of the in this side you have these kind of like uh, little they're called light wells and it used to be and you can look online and all the light came in like like that middle bit here but i think because they're built up outside they built all the skyscrapers it stopped that happening so I was in once and I had a tiny board. I only took a, like an A4 board then. I, I take a slightly bigger board now, but this suddenly happened and I didn't have time to take a photo. The light suddenly streamed in. And that was one of those magic things that you can't get anywhere else. You're there with a pencil, just putting those things, you know, putting a moment down. And that was uh, amazingly special for me. And, um, but these are, both charcoal. Now, the ones that I showed you before, most of them are compressed charcoal, which are a little bit harder and you, they don't rub out as easily. But with willow charcoal, which these are, you can get that light and dark more. You can get an easier idea of kind of like light, light and dark. And um, I, I really enjoyed looking down and the, these people on the on the uh, right left, <laughs> so I'm terrible, I never know. Um, uh, again, like the lantern round. But then this is the next one is almost like Shibuya, actually standing in the, the kind of like middle of that concourse and actually seeing these big kind of figures. But they're actually smaller than they should be. Because if I really made the size of those figures there, I wouldn't be able to see anything. So we've got at the back, we've got the ticket booth and in the middle we've got this here and uh, I often get um, in one of my um, in, in one of my workshops I make uh, uh, people draw I make people draw the inside of this with some photographs but to start with first they have to draw me a small um, birthday cake they make a birthday cake and then they draw it on a plate and they draw, and then they draw it on a kind of like aluminium square or rectangle. And then they go, what, what's this for, do you know? And I make sure that they put jam in it and I make sure they put little candles on the top because that is this, it's this being made. It's, it's that little thing then. Sometimes when you're drawing outside, you've got to think of those kind of shapes. When I'm drawing, when I'm drawing uh, the, um, uh, what's called the St. Paul's Cathedral, I think of uh, a Terry's Orange. And sometimes 
you have to think if it's because it's so difficult sometimes like when you're out drawing you have to be quite what's it what's it feel like what 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 can I kind of like reference and and it's hungry work so I imagine food comes to mind quite often well I don't know if you've ever have you, have, have you been to uh Grand Central Station I haven't no <gasps> well underneath there they have this fantastic 1950s food place downstairs but it's got the all the uh all the old, actually, the last time I went, it's quite sad, really. Um, there's more and more homeless people underneath. I've never, I've never seen as many as the last time I went, and sleeping there and, and things like that. But it's, they, they've done it up this lovely kind of like 1950, because they were going to, um, I think it was Jackie Anassis who stopped this from being uh, kind of demolished, because they was going to use it as a, a bowling alley. That's good, isn't it? So. Uh, yeah, and there's actually there's actually a hole in the ce ceiling where they actually used to show uh, at one point they didn't know what to do with it, so they used to show missiles there. You could buy missiles from like an arms fair. So there's a little hole where the missiles were so big they couldn't get in hardly. Just so I tell you that that's that, that's just an added thing. <laughs> Wait, 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 I can't, I can't find the thing we'll go on the next one, sorry. Oh dear. I did, one I thing I've got to ask you, it's, it's mm -hmm. probably not a very interesting question, but people always really worry that they have to have a good understanding of linear perspective before they're allowed to draw cities. And I feel like oh, what I see oh, in sorry. your drawings is something much more exciting. What What's your attitude to that? Uh, I, oh sorry, let, let, let me just have a little, I believe in Spider-Man as you would I, I, I think you have to channel your inner spider, mummy. But I am not great in perspective. I understand it a little bit. And I, I know that, you know, you've got to look for your eye level. Everything above your eye level goes down to the, uh, to the, um, to that horizon level, to, to the vanishing point. Thank you, Paul. Anything underneath it goes up to it. But what I do is I work with connections. I'll pick one thing and draw everything above it, everything below it, almost like a spider. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do that because if you put your big perspective lines in, you will try and squash, you'll try and squash everything into that. Because generally perspective, when, when you're looking in cities, it's imperceptible. It goes down a little bit, a small bit, as long as you know which way it's going. So you don't see those big long lines of kind of like the big rows of houses and you will try and squash it in. So you have to, if you're in my class, you have to channel your inner spider. I love that. That's fantastic. And it's a bit weird. <laughs> and I, I, uh, and I can see some things. of that in here. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it looks like a big butterfly. It looks like a moth. Look at that. I never <laughs> realised until, until I did it. It actually looked like, it looks like a massive moth there. So there you go. Um, but this is these are the drawings of the Olympics from the Olympics, and uh, my studio in Hackney Wick was right across from where the Olympics would be made. And you know they said this is going to be the, they're going to have the Olympics here, and we all went yeah right because it was the biggest fridge mountain in Europe at that one <laughs> at, that, at that point. They, they were just used to throw all fridges down. It was like saying that Accrington had got the Olympics. It was near Stratford and it was really not. And then when this happened, it was just absolutely amazing on my doorstep. And I am, you know, if I'm nothing else, I am Mrs. Crane. I love the, the kind of like movements that you can get from, from the crane watching it and how it kind of like goes one way and, and, and then another. And uh, so th this was the stadium being made. and. Uh, it, it was a very strange time, actually, in kind of Hackney Week. We had, um, we got a lot of promises that, oh, it's all for the local artists and you'll all get something. Absolutely nothing. It was only the big international artists. And if you were doing work on the Olympics, they at one point wanted us to sign a thing to say that we would not sell anything until after the Olympics was over. <laughs> so we we, we, so we couldn't, you couldn't go on it. So I did a lot of work just outside the kind of like um, Olympic thing. But the one on the right is just 
a small bit of one of my drawings just so you can kind of like see the kind of like layers mm -hmm. of uh, it's probably this little bit here and, and it's saying earlier this is compressed charcoal these marks yeah 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 so so i mean i, I do a lot of rubbing out but not for rubbing out sake it's just that i change ideas a lot and uh sometimes um i will break things up and i will bring more information so I, it was really fantastic being being able to be on the kind of like uh, with everything being near to me because I could go out every every few days and do more sketches and then come back to the studio and actually keep feeding them in. So this this would I mean this took me quite a few months to actually do you know so it would be started in one way and then I'd go out and do some more sketches and and come back and it would just grow. And I think, have you got more from the Olympics as well? Is the because I, I I remember seeing um, was it Anish Kapoor's sculpture? Oh you... yeah, yeah. It's, that's that's the next. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> yeah, that was about, about that. I have a tale about that. Which is good. Oh right. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but this is uh, th this is our Hardy's Aquatic Centre, and also this is Stratford Station, and this is um, and that kind of like it looks like a w weird little animal some kind of way that is the bridge uh, for the for the new shopping center and i think have doing so many uh large drawings of the i think i did about 11 in the end or something like that in a, in a kind of like three year period and sometimes i don't do as many as that but i, I, I did that. i think i learned a lot about drawing and what I wanted to do, but they, I did a lot of sketches from on to, well, I, I did it everywhere with this, but I, I did quite a lot of sketches from the top of um, of a of a car park, which is now, of course, a trendy bar in Stratford. But this bit on the right here, if I was standing in front of that, that would be behind me. So it's in exactly the right place, but I couldn't see it then. So I'd actually to move over. Right. And uh, there's, there's a lovely little quote from um, the, the the French kind of um, artist Coral, and somebody uh, he was actually out there, kind of like drawing, making uh, in in the landscape, doing a drawing, and he had this he was drawing this lake in front of him, and there was this tree in front of him, and somebody said, um, "Where's this tree from?" And he said, "It's behind me," and um, but it's in exactly the same place if you move back. So it's, I think, not so on coral. Or this is, or the action, there is a little guy with a red helmet of the, no, sorry. Um, so sorry, coral is that. But um, it, it's just, I found how to play around with things a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. than, than I'd, I'd ever done. I've never put as much together as that on such a big scale. So that's about, I don't know, seven foot by five foot. And then this is the, uh, this is the Arsenal Mittal over, and I, I think I did two or three of these. And uh, the little sketches there, the one that's in the bottom at the top, the, the bottom sketch of the, of the top, mm -hmm. one, that was the second day that it was being built. So I drew and drew and drew that all being kind of made, and it, it was quite interesting. There was only, I think, sometimes there were five, sometimes there was three guys from Bolton who built this. That was all there was because they brought it in um, parts of it already made up. So they built, bolted it together. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they, this is the oyster line middle orbit. And like you say, it's uh, Anish Kapoor, but they, they were really kind of like messed me about because they kept saying, oh yes, uh, middle, oh yeah, we want one of these, if not two and lots and lots of prints and everything like that. And then the tide kind of turned against it. People weren't sure whether they liked it or not. So I went in and I was going to be presenting, I was going to buy this and that. And they get said, no, we decided not to buy anything, but we're going to give you a small, um, a small little statue of it buy and I had this in my hand and it was made out of crystal and I, I've still got it somewhere and I, I went outside and I very nearly threw it through this big window <laughs> <laughs> I, 
honestly, I stood there weighing it up because they'd been on for months and months and months. And I had this kind of like thing and I thought, I'm going to throw that through the window. But I didn't in the end, which was good. <laughs> But it, it was just fascinating how, how it all went round, and and I, I think it looked fab at the Olympics because it, you, you could, it, it was kind of like it kind of like stood against the um, stood out against the uh, stadium and the aquatic centre, and I, I think it's lovely how it went round. I, I thoroughly enjoyed um, actually drawing it, and you can just see some kind of like scaffolding there, which is the aquatic centre being built as well. But it would have been built by this time, but because I had sketched it before. And on to the right, that's the also the aquatic centre being built. That was one of the kind of like um, sketches, one of the million sketches I made of that. And uh, do you know, actually seeing the drawing of it's making me appreciate the sculpture itself much more. Um, well, I, I, I really liked it, but now they put a, a slide on it. So you I, can I actually go down and slide very, down it now, you know, they didn't, but actually walking down it, I thought it was amazing. I don't think, you, you, you don't get the feel of it as much as when you went down it and you could actually feel it coming around. I thought, I, I thought they did an amazing job, but there's, there's like me and Sam, I think are the only two people that particularly love it. So there you go. <laughs> what's, what's your take on it? Do you like it as a, as a sculpture or as a building or? I, I, um, I don't <laughs> dislike it. It's it's actually it's just really nice seeing it through your eyes actually here, and and kind of appreciating the the flow of it a bit more. But um, I quite like incongruous vast structures, and I, I mean I love mm. I love cranes as well. Actually, I I love ports when you've got things oh, that oh, yeah. feel like they they exist on a scale beyond human um human sort of physicality and and that has another sense of it you know it's almost like a giant's merry-go-round or something like that that Cyril Power print of the merry-go-round do you know that of the Grosvenor School line I don't know it, it's a wonderful print but it, it reminds me oh yeah 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 the Grosvenor School oh yeah yeah the, yeah I, I love those they're, they're so lovely and so colorful yeah, yeah. I, and I love the way that they that they kind of reference that 1920s 1930s deco kind of thing yeah, Sybil Andrews and Claude Fly and all that. I can't remember what the next one is. Oh, yeah, prints. Oh, prim appropriately, printmaking. Uh, I, when I left Liverpool, I went to the uh, Royal Academy Schools. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about for, for um, uh, painting, <laughs> which I did very little of. But I did a lot of big black and white paintings. And uh, I also discovered printmaking. I went into the kind of like printmaking room and um, I very ridiculously, and everybody thought it was hilarious. I won printmaker of the year nationally. You see, can you hear my husband laughing? And that, 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 I don't know, everybody just laughed and laughed and laughed, but, but I did. And uh, I, I got the book for printmaking and, um, I, I did a lot of etching at that point. I, I, I did a lot of etching. And then I was kind of invited to um, to apply to the Royal College of Art just for printmaking. And I very strangely and amazingly got in. And uh, I think I was talking to you before, I felt it was a little bit like imposter syndrome because there were so many people who were so much more technical than I was. And I, I, I had a little bit of a difficult time there, but... Um, and I didn't, I, I enjoyed my time there. I met some fantastic people. And it was so great was, was actually, looking back now, two years. I mean, I had three years at the Royal Academy Schools and then another two years doing printmaking. And it was such a fantastic opportunity and kind of like getting a scholarship to go there. And, and, um, and then I didn't do it for a lot of years. It wasn't until I started teaching at the Royal Drawing School that I used to go down every Saturday and started printmaking again. And then they kind of said, come and, come and teach. And I'm like, it's no, no. But, uh, and I started doing that and I, I got into it. And then I realized that I'd actually kind of like missed painting and I didn't actually realize that. So I found um, monotypes, monoprinting, because I used to do a lot of etchings, but the etchings took me as long as my drawings as long as my big drawings and I needed something else that was quicker and kind of like I love the paint and the quality of this so these are what I'm doing at the minute these are I, I go to 
Uh, sometimes I work at the Royal Drawing School, so sometimes I still go there, but I also go to this lovely place called Arcane Studios, and I'm on the only one in on a Saturday. Uh, so I can get lots of kind of like, uh, I like series, do, doing series of things, I might do four or five or something like that, and uh, experimenting with kind of like the topic, like I'm playing with ghost prints and uh, the mainly kind of like architectural, but I'm going to show you some things that, that aren't afterwards. And um, the top one is, I think it's the Belfront Tower. I always get that one mixed up. This is uh, the Belfront Tower. And the black one of those two, you can see, is the first print. And then the grey bit in the second one is the ghost print. And then I've also painted on the plate, but it still had the grey in it. Mm -hmm. I painted something else. So this is uh, a bit about being, uh, I think I can't remember what, what it's called, but it's about, um, what is it called? Entitled something, or I can't remember what, Loved and Unloved. It was, it's about architecture. Once there was really love, that like everybody loved these towers in the 1950s and they hated them and then they loved them. And it, and then I put this Perinesi on us because everybody loved the Romans, then they hated them. And then, you know, so it was kind of like the way that uh, architecture goes in and out of fashion, really. And on the right, I'm a bit obsessed by the Beckers. I don't know if you say Beckers or Becher. You, you'll have seen them, I'm saying it badly. They're uh, the German photographers, Hilda and Bernd Becher, or Becker, B-E-C-H-E-R. And they did series, loads of series, where they took photographs in one particular way of like water towers or kind of like, certain bits of mills and things like that at the same time. And uh, th th this one on the right is me playing around with making it feel almost like a photograph and looking at their work. And uh, at the bottom, it's below that. This is Battersea Power Station, which I'm obsessed with. And then this is um, New York in the middle. It's, uh, it's the Empire State. And um, I, I went, I went with my lovely husband to New York and uh, he was, we, we met a friend and they both said, right, I'm off to a bar. We're, we're off to a bar, bye. So I was on my own by, in the middle of New York, it was really getting dark. I was just walking around on my own and I saw all these, I took all these kind of like photographs of the, um, of everything just going dark and it was getting steamy. So I started making photos. I was on my own in the middle of it all, not knowing where anything was. They left me, that's not fair, is it? And um, the one on the right, it's it's kind of like playing with kind of like water and uh, turps to kind of like make it kind of like uh, break out a little bit. So I do like the idea of, um, doing that <laughs> and um these are my prints of trump donald trump and uh, the reason i did this was during lockdown i watched far too many kind of like films and far too many uh, things on television and uh, i was amazed by how the kind of like uh, that time trump and the Senate kind of unfolded in front of our eyes on the television. We couldn't go out, we couldn't do it. So I was riveted by, by this. And the little kind of like marks at the top and me uh, trying to make it feel like a film. And uh, I was trying to, as it goes on, it all kind of like, for me, it all kind of falls to bits. And in the end, the one on the end, it's, it's like almost like, uh, a film has been kind of like burnt or come down because it just all enfolded as like this, these fires and uh, things going to um, this strange, strange, I don't know, uh, conclusion where we started with Trump at the beginning and then it went through all this and there was flags and fire and it it all went to some kind of like very kind of like weird statement in the end. So that, that, that was my thing. And being able to just kind of like, I, I use 
which we're talking about, that I mainly use photographs when I'm working in print. I don't use photographs in my big drawings, but for prints, I often use photographs. I use probably two or three for each kind of thing. So I'm trying to get the kind of like uh, the essence of certain things and uh, <laughs> we better move on. And um, I also do, I also like anything that moves. Mm -hmm. So I got quite into the idea of horses. And um, so at the top here, and I'm a real big fan of my bridge. Absolutely looking at my bridge and the, and the kind of the horses and the thing. And, and my bridge is the person who took all the photographs of uh, the first time that people, well, so it was the first time that people saw how horses kind of ran and how people moved and things like that. So at the top, this, these are six prints, but it's from the same plate. I just added a little bit more turps to it, or I, I added a little bit more kind of like paint to it. And I, it, this took me a whole day, it nearly, nearly killed me. I don't think I can do it again. So I started, that's in the top corner. So I painted this on my plate. So I, um, I paint on a, on a, a metal plate and, uh, and then I put it, put a damp piece of paper on it and I put it through a press and you only get one print from it. That's, that's a monotype or monoprint, but you still got the, uh, the plate. So it will just get a little bit grayer. So I printed it again and again and again, because I wanted to feel like the horse was kind of running and then it almost gone into nothing. And um, this one here, the, the one next to it, is, is, is a double plate. And I wanted to make it feel like it was uh, lots of kind of like marks. And it was, let's just see, what I'm thinking. So, some of it's just quite abstract in a way. So it's just like the kind of like essence of a race rather than saying, you know, this is a big horse. And then at the bottom, these men going around, that Quite a lot. My my, uh, my husband bought me for Christmas. He bought me a Mybridge book because I've been kind of like looking at it. And these are um, acrobats, but I was like putting it in different ways. And I've done boxes and I've done different kind of things. This is what I like. This is Fred Astaire. <laughs> and as I said, I watched a lot of films during during the during, during uh, the lockdown. But you must see this online. You can go online. You can see the two minute. Thing and there's a this is Easter parade with Judy Garland and <laughs> Fred Astaire and um, in the in in the middle of the film there's suddenly this uh, he goes into kind of like dancing but they, I think it's the first time this happened on film this slowed him down but behind it was in real time so it's the first time that he actually started so he's he's dancing around and he's throwing his stick up and uh, and it's just completely fascinating but as a child I was fascinated by the Nicholas brothers I don't know if you ever know, know the Nicholas brothers they're these fantastic uh tap dancers that they started as young boys and uh, it was just it was you always have it on Saturday afternoon it was always just before the wrestling there was a black and white film or something like that and then my mum would shout they're on they're on come down and it was Nicholas brothers so I'm trying, I'm just trying to draw anything that moves really, so. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now I'm, I'm conscious of time, Jeanette, and yes. I don't want to take up. I, I, I think we need time. to finish. I think this is the book. Lovely. Okay, so. I, and if, if anyone had questions, if you wanted to put them in the oh, queue. I didn't realise it was eight o'clock. Well, very quickly. Yeah, so I, I did promise to move you on, but actually there has yeah, a point where, where I feel like that's appropriate. You were just, you've, it's been absolute gold, Jeanette. Um, well, I but, don't know. I've, I've obviously yacked too much. <laughs> <laughs> if if anyone does have any questions that have have not been answered already, pop them in the Q and A. But I'm I'm hoping that actually you've covered so much. But I really want to hear about the book. Tell me about it. I yeah. Okay. Well, um, there's a picture of me up, up at the top, and that was during lockdown. And uh, I had to in lockdown. I had to kind of like um, start working as we all did. Start working smaller. And uh, they asked me if I would write a book uh, on something like 365, just before lockdown, 365 ways how to draw. And I thought, 
I can't do that because, you know, the 364th would have to be like a windscreen wiper. So I said, I can't do that, I'm sorry. And then lockdown happened. And I said, well, actually I can do it, but can I get my husband in, who's a much better writer than me? And can we do it where it's a little bit more user-friendly? So it's city sketching reimagining, it's like an A to Z. So you can kind of like pop into it. And it's, some of it is my work. Some of it, as you'll see over here, it's examples on how to do things. And uh, most of the color things are poles. And um, it's kind of like smaller things, but I had to learn how to redraw and how to, I never worked from photographs before in my own work, except in prints. And this, I got into it more. And I had to work out and help people kind of like think how they can actually be inventive using photographs. And this is the, the, these are some of the things. So this is my drawing of Piccadilly. These are, there's in how to draw figures and things like that. And this is Paul's at the bottom and space at the top, how you can do things. And sometimes I get people to work from films, which is the colorful ones. And this is one of Paul's exercises, how you can actually uh, go along and do that. And, I, and this is what I'm doing now. This is one of my drawing paintings. So these are lots of fractured journeys, which I did. And this is what, I'm doing at the minute. This is, I've just finished this is Battersea Power Station. Uh, not Battersea Tube Station, but behind it is uh, some of the developments that, that's going on, some of the big architectural developments. And this is where I think you're going to say about our, this is, we explore drawing. This is uh, our kind of like website, uh, but it leads in, I think, to teaching. And you were going to mention about writing and coming down and doing some work, I think. Well, I know that some people that are with us tonight are going to be joining us for your course, which is really exciting. They're probably run away now. Probably, I'm not going to <laughs> <laughs> No, Very I'm, wise, I can't, I was say. I, I'm, it's feeling it's so, so infusing. Um, but no, it's just going to be really exciting having you in the studio and being able to kind of go out and, and, you know, for everyone to be able to get some of your insights into, you know, how to approach the subject of a city, you know, the, the kind of the, the engagement with a, a space. Well, that, that, that's, that's what, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited to actually see, see uh, kind of like uh, Brighton and, you know, we will be doing that imaginative things, which is why I put these up. These are what I do online. Uh, these are uh, uh, imaginative cities sometimes, then we work from film and then we work from photographs. Obviously, we'll be working from sketches that, that, that we do, but we'll also be doing some imaginative ones as well. This is when I go into, I take people into to draw kind of like uh, at the V&A. And this last one is my poor husband uh, framing my work. And I think this is very, very funny. Sorry, Paul, but I think this is... Yeah, yeah, it's something, yeah, you might be reframing it. So, so this is, we, we share a studio, but we're never in at the same time or else we kill each other. So, we stand with each other, no doubt about it. But this is when you've been very kind and doing my, uh, my work. It is, it, I, I'm thinking that framing itself is an admirable job um, on that scale. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has been it has been such a treat, Jeanette, to hear you go through all of this. Um, but, I mean, it's been it's been a real journey. Is I don't have a lot of big buildings around me where I am right now, and I'm suddenly you get out there, you make you 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 but you've got a lot of cars. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have to look out for them. It's, um, we, we've got, uh, I, I, I always used to be really cross as a child that they never finished London because they seem to have scaffolding <laughs> up all the time. But, but now I'm appreciating that the fact that there are all of these wonderful lines because it's something that you've engaged with so wonderfully in all of your I, work. I do so. actually like that. That's the best thing that I've ever heard, actually being cross at something not being finished. That's lovely, Jay. I was very frustrated as a child that liked to finish things. Anyway, You see, I'd <laughs> enjoy that. I'd love it. Bring it on. <laughs> well you know let's hope that these cities remain unfinished and remain an exciting and evolving mm. subject to be drawn um but thank you so much for i've enjoyed it but i've probably yacked on far, far too much i did warn you <laughs> no not at all well we've only run over by five minutes but um but i'm conscious of your evening i'm sure you have a bath to go to oh um, definitely 
<laughs> and, a, and a gin and, and a, maybe a cosmo let's let's see maybe a gin and tonic, so. maybe a cosmo <laughs> thank you thank you so much for inviting me and um i hope i see some of you at jake's or at we explore drawing or um something like that thank you I hope so. I'm I'm going to post up links to all of Jeanette's things that we explore drawing and and all of the links to her work and her book if anyone's keen to follow up on that. So I'm going to put that up on draw and on why not? <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you again, Jeanette. It's just been a pleasure, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight as well. Thank you everybody thank for you listening all. in. <laughs> well, I hope you have a lovely rest of the evening, and um, see you again. Thank you. Bye then. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. And bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.